Hello, everyone. Um, and um, I'm also glad to be here today with you um, uh, in Tartu and uh, with old friends. Um, my presentation is a bit uh, different from my previous um, speakers, not just because it's a bit um, not sure how to, 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 to put in an frame. It's just like an open discussion for you guys as friends. It's, it's, it's nothing about the project or anything. It's a bit of my, my experience in this uh, world. It's more about maybe open data and open source or whatever. But it's, uh, it's, it's just a few things that uh, somehow in life, in professional life, I, I, I went through and uh, I'd like to share a bit with you. So, And of course, you are in Europe and Europe is a bit complicated. And uh, I just put this nice map from the timemap.org and you could understand why it's a bit difficult because we have like quite some history and this continent change uh, in many ways through the history. So this is why it reflects somehow in all our daily life in no matter what, what the domain is, of course, this kind of history will make a stamp or on us, so yeah, this is why. So about me, I, as Kondrina mentioned, I'm, uh, I have all the hats possible in the world, so I'm working for the uh, governmental entity for many years now, it's like almost 24, so the Met Office in, in Bucharest, Romania. I'm also working for a private company. I'm also working with the European Commission, being the delegate of my country in the Copernicus User Forum, the Destination Earth Coordination Group. Um, and uh, I'm also teaching at the University of Bucharest, and um, I'm also involved with OHGO. I've been in the OHGO Board of Directors, and I'm also steering an NGO in, in my country that organized in 2019 uh, one of these events, the Phosphor-G Global um, in Bucharest uh, in September 2019. And the most important thing is I'm a volunteer in, in this uh, organization. That's, I'm very proud of it. So, that being said, um, some almost 20 years ago, in uh, 2006, I attended this event in Lausanne in, um, in Switzerland. And uh, that event changed, really changed my life. It was called Phosphor-G. Um, it's the same conference, but it was the global, global one, and um, I was like uh, quite young in my profession at that time. Um, had like a couple of years in working in the geospatial domain, and this conference totally changed my professional life, my way of thinking, and my, the way I'm doing things today. And uh, I put the picture of Skyler here because it's one of the great people I met at that conference, but it was not only Skylar. I had the chance to meet with uh, Frank Warmerdam, Marcus Nettler, Gerald Fenouin, all those good and important people in our community. And for me, the, the speech of um, Frank Warmerdam about why you should embrace open source as a, as a way of dealing with your professional daily life things really changed my life uh, and brought me here in, your, in, in front of you today. So sorry for being a bit emotional about this, but it was a great time to, to remember this and um, to understand how these things evolve in, in our space and in between 2006 and, and, and now. And why we're discussing this? Coming from the public uh, entity, on a governmental entity, and we have already for many years in a row this speech that if it's public money, that data should be free, that code should be free, that knowledge should be free. But uh, is this the case? Yes, in many, many, many ways, yes. And uh, Europe is not doing bad. But still, we have a lot of things and challenges to, to go through. And uh, I looked on, on, on this kind of, uh, I don't know, nice reports uh, that every year some kind of organization we're preparing and they do, do this a uh, very nice work on, I don't know, getting all these insights. And yeah, it looks, it looks good, I, I guess. It, 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 it looks good. Um, but uh, yeah, um, some things are not 
that that good in in, in in Europe or in Romania in my case and uh, of course life is about cycles so we hope for life like like this up and down and so on and um, not sure how many of you remember that in 2004 the Munich municipality decided to go open source and to to, to move away from Microsoft and uh, embrace Linux as an operating system and uh, LibreOffice as, as, a, as a way of managing documents. And it was quite a news in our community at that time. And I know all SGO people said, oh, we have this example. We also had the example of South Africa moving to, to open source for all that governmental things. Well, Munich at some point dropped the open source and disappeared in time at some point. And I was like reading a Reddit thread like three months ago when I saw this. A German state is moving 300,000 PC to Linux and LibreOffice. And it's, it's, it's good, it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's, it's not a problem that Munich dropped open source some years ago. It's just we have no memory of the previous experience. It's like, come on guys, I was like there, I, I knew when it was a news in 2004, now you announcing this again, like something very important and, and somehow we, we, we miss to, to track these things and to have like um, organic, this is a good word from the, you know, the, the influencer and the, the advertising company are using this the organic term of how growing things and it, it, it's, it's something that is lacking to us somehow we are jumping jumping from one end to the another and we, we forgot about this kind of thing so uh, getting open source to Munich municipality it was a failure in the end it didn't work we are rebooting right now uh, okay so I have just a few examples so I my presentation is not that coherent in, in the end, but we are living in a continent that is doing a lot of interesting things for geospatial, and we are lucky to, to live here. And to have, like, I, I put here some of the, the things that uh, really, really change our domain. So we're talking about Inspire Directive, the Open Data Directive, the Copernicus Program, the Destination Earth, the Green Deal, Join Up, um, ESA Open Science Initiative, and why not Cyber Resilient Act? I had a few slides and remove it because we have a session just dedicated to that uh, after, after, after this. So all these things really um, change the landscape of, of Europe. It's not perfect, but it's much more than when Ivan was singing WMS at WMS in 2010 in, in, in Barcelona. It's a lot of data, a lot of software, and it, 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 it is good. And I would like to go through a bit of like some examples on what is good and what can be improved somehow and why, and why it's good to, to remember these things and keep in mind that uh, it's not always to go to the advertising, why we should care a lot about this is things that we got until now. So much open data, so much open software, uh, open standards and so on. We are here right now, but we could vanish. And it's important to, to understand how we, 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 we progressed towards this and how we should somehow uh, safeguard this. And I would just be discussing a bit about Copernicus because uh, it's something I'm deeply involved for many years now. And, um, you all know this is the most successful, maybe, space program in the world, and uh, we did it. Europeans, we did this. We designed a program for space exploration. We put satellites on the orbit, and now we have data that are, are the biggest archive in the world of space data. We overpassed NASA some years ago, and we do great at this, but then, and I, I remember yesterday's talk by Athena. He mentioned the gold goose thing. At that time, it was estimated that every euro invested in, in Copernicus would bring back 24 more. That's not true. Some years ago, they, it was another uh, article on the, on, the, on the website of Copernicus saying that 
10 times more than the cost. It's not also true. It's like about three. Every euro, it, it, it brings back in the economy three more, or 2.8 euro or something, something like that, which is not bad. But it, it, it was really was a game changer. Uh, and I, at that time, in 2011, when the, the, the open license was uh, approved by European Commission and uh, by the member states, I was part of the discussion in the Copernicus User Forum. And it was quite an experience to see how difficult and tough it was to adopt an open license for Copernicus data due to many interests. And um, now it's here, but uh, we'll see if we'll last. And uh, being a bit, um, being, getting a bit of criticism in my presentation, it's, so we designed this great uh, system for gathering uh, data from above us and, uh, and, and, and from, from many fields. And uh, then we realized we don't have an infrastructure to deliver, to streamline the data to the, to the users. And then we decide to create our own geo clouds because uh, we are from Europe and then Amazon and Google and Microsoft are from the other continents and uh, somehow we don't play along. And we, we, we designed this, we had this tender and we had like um, created five, not one, five geo clouds. I don't mention the names, but uh, they are like the most important companies in the, in the, in the, in the industry in Europe had their share in this. And we had like five entry points for getting access to Copernicus data. This was 2018. And this is like uh, how like uh, it was announced on the, one of the companies, how to explain that, how great this would be for the, for the ecosystem and, uh, and for us. And just four years later, goodbye. Uh, this one of the, the end, this endpoints shut down and now it's not, even the domain is not, not, not working. And what I would like to, to emphasize here is like, we have such a great space program and the products are really, really great, but somehow we are losing ourselves in details. And uh, just to make sure that the industry will have their share of money, and public money, we just fail to provide like a, a sustainable way of delivering this data to the industry, to the public, to NGOs and whatever. And this is a lesson to be learned because we spend like, for these five uh, clouds, we spend like almost 200 million euro from our money. And now we reinvent it. If you search for Dias right now, not so many replies on, on Google because the concept is gone. We, we have two new ones. Uh, doing the same thing and no one explain us why, why it happened. But okay, going to the new ones. Uh, if you have a business and, uh, it, and you are encouraged by the, by the commission and by the, the euro, by the, 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 the government to use that infrastructure to develop your business and um, make it operational, get operational services. You see things like, like, like this, I was like, downloading some data from WeCare at some point. And, uh, it was on the um, 8th of May. And then I, I, I discovered that all the data is corrupted. If it's more than 100 megabytes, you cannot download by, by any means. And I, I created a ticket, of course, on, the, on there. And I got this reply. Bank holiday in Europe, I'm barely like, for like a week or something. No one managed to, to, to fix this, and uh, it's, I mean, it's, we care, it's like 50 million euro investment, and uh, it's how many petabytes of data, I don't know, it, but a lot of petabytes of data were not available from no one, just because, I don't know, we didn't have enough resources to have a, a real support office, and this is a pity. Uh, and you could compare it, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not, advertising Amazon or Google or whatever, but you could take a look in the terms of, um, uh, commercial terms of, uh, and the uptake up time and the reply uh, on, on, on Amazon, and you'll see it's, it's not good for Europe. Uh, and then the Copernicus has these services, which are doing on thematic uh, domains, they, they, they 
they release a number of products that are really, really nice. And um, you see some numbers here. This is from, from March or from April. Uh, we have quite a lot of data. And um, not sure if you uh, are aware about ERA-5 data set. Most probably it's, it's, it's the, 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 the best geospatial data set that the, that the humanity created in history. It's, it's, it's like SRTM, what SRTM did, NASA did, in the, and DLR and others did, in the, um, with, with this SRTM data, ERA-5, it's, it's quite the same from Europe. It's a, it's, it's a huge data set. It's really, really impressive, and it's used all over the world. Not sure why 38.8% of the, 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 the data is downloaded by, by Asian countries, but still Europe is, is, in, is, is on front. But we publish the data, but the data is, is really, really huge. It's big, and it's difficult to do work with that. And I got this message a couple of days ago from my colleague, Alex, in the Met office, pointing to this GitHub of Google that released um, a cloud-optimized version of uh, ERA-5 on their infrastructure. And this is what Alexander said, this is a game changer. Yes, it, you, could, you could now use ERA-5, which is a multi-petabyte volume of data on your laptop without downloading all the data. Just uh, why we're not capable of, of doing this? Because the data is, is, is so amazing and it's, it's, it's so great. Not a criticism, it's just observational, daily, daily work. And then discussing about the open, open data. So being in this kind of uh, circles, Attending this kind of meetings at the, the, in Brussels, I'm, got, I'm also got this kind of information that, uh, of course, Europe and especially Romania is in a very sensitive geopolitical context. We have a war on our border, and our data can be used by an aggressor to make harm to, to us or to others. But it's so easy, it, I don't know if you could see it, it's just an information that the member states and the commission must discuss if Copernicus data should be open because it can be misused in case of war. And um, it's, it's hidden in details and uh, only people like really have a bit of experience, not the open source guys that are like naive, and, but people that know a bit of how a government is thinking or a uh, European Commission and others are thinking. You, you could see the dangers that are in this kind of document, that in, in a second we could lose all this open access to the data just because you could see radars with Sentinel-1 on the front line, on whatever. Uh, yeah, just a kind of small details that, that uh, you don't see it, but at some point that, that can, can affect you. And regarding to the war, yeah, it affected also the community at, at, at I don't know who is not using QGIS. Maybe you saw this uh, error message on QGIS. Alexander, who is a Ukrainian and uh, one of the great contributors to QGIS, decided to, 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 to close his um, plugins, just not the Russians to use it. And um, this is, again, by, by <laughs> one of the most open persons in the world. It just has no way to protect to do anything, just closing his, uh, his repository just because uh, he has no other powers. And um, yeah, this is also affect us. And um, because I'm also working for a company, another danger in this is the dual use thing. And uh, it seems easy, but it's not. I mean, um, Romania was a socialist country, or you know, all know, a communist country, and we have something called Securitatea, which is the KGB of, of Romania at that time. And uh, they were all over. They are listening to your phone. They are, they are all in your life. And uh, nowadays, in the company Terracina, where I'm also working, and I have some colleagues around here, every month we get a visit from the new structure, which is not called Securitatea, but and we discuss about the dual license and the how we make sure that the software that Terracina is developing is not getting to the Russians, 
North Korea, China, Iran, and, and so on. And it's, it, it seems like a trivial thing, I know. But it's not. It's, it's really complicated. It's, it's difficult to discuss with this guy. They have a law that said geospatial data uh, software, it's dual use. If you ask me, also the calendar is dual use. And you could use it to whatever. Just to finish with some good things. I have no, no more time. Um, what I saw in the past was like we had open source uh, deliverables in projects that were like just open source because the commission or European Space Agency demanded to be open source, but it was no community behind that. Look at how Snap is doing, looking right now. Look on the charts on, on, on GitHub to see the commits and you'll see this is at least we have a good healthy environment and the commits are there and, and this, is, this is good. We really embrace it, not just make it saying it is open source because we demand it. But it's spatial, <laughs> special. This is the question of uh, um, our friend Steven Feldman. This is the companies they got that got in 2000 more than 5 million euro uh, raised from, I don't, know, I don't know, angels or whatever investors. And there's no spatial company here. We have this huge public spend money in, in contracts that involve software. And GDAL, for instance, is, is, is a key element in, 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 in a lot of this kind of multi-million euro investments in, in Europe. And also, you'll now see you know, geospatial company paying, not, 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 let's say a big company spending money with, for instance, with QGIS. I put this because it's, they have these logos. Do you see one of the big companies that are using this in public tenders, they are using our software, they committed to develop QGIS or GDAL or whatever. Unfortunately, no, only it's small names and the small companies are, are doing, and this is not, not good somehow. But the fact is that we live here and we are like amazingly um, lucky. It's, it's such a pleasure to be with you these days and I cannot believe that from my Eastern European country, I can enjoy so many years of sharing uh, knowledge and sharing ideas and discussing and debating. And it's lovely. I love you. And yeah, we, there is hope, plain and simple. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, presentation and uh, for the final pictures. <laughs> so are there any questions? Okay, so if there are, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Vasile, for the presentation. I think it's always important to get uh, perspectives on what the EU, what Europe is doing. This is very welcome, and uh, I can share um, your view. Also, you are a very experienced person, and really, uh, this is good. Um, consider that uh, you started saying that Europe is complicated. It is. Uh, only because it's 27 member states, uh, 24 languages, how many differences. So it's a process. Uh, we have seen, I think, uh, that things can be improved um, in many places, in many ways, but it's a process. And uh, it's a process that happens also through, uh, let's say, the, the bottom and the communities. And open source geospatial is actually there. I, I think uh, spatial is still special. Uh, the fact that, uh, back to the last uh, slides, that we do not see geospatial companies, I think it's, it's simply due to the fact that geospatial is everywhere, is really everywhere today. And uh, back to the other slides, uh, uh, with the uh, open source geospatial tools and the OS Geo tools, I think many, if not all, those tools were actually supported by the Commission, by ESA, indirectly, mostly indirectly. Mm. There are no really sponsors going or funding going to a project, but indirectly, I think open source is behind almost anything that uh, is done at the commission. We have seen 
even only today presentations on Destination Earth and other EU funded projects in this room. I'm sure the same happened in other rooms. So I think personally Europe has done a lot to support uh, the, the geospatial community and the community projects. Uh, of course, this doesn't mean everything is perfect. Uh, so let's work together to make it better. Thank you, Marco. So of course, it's, so it's no criticism in, in my slides. It's just sharing some views. And sometimes, yeah, it, it's difficult. It's so many countries. I, I can share you a story I told Ivan, I think, last evening. So in, in, the, in the, at the European Commission, for instance, when uh, the member states are discussing, they, we have like at least five translations that need to be in. in you know, for the, the main five languages. And um, then was like the Italian uh, delegate was speaking and uh, he was also hearing what the translator was saying and uh, then he stops it. The translators are not understanding my very technical point and I would like to speak in English for the people to understand. And the chair, which was also Italian person said, Italy, because you don't have names in uh, Italy, stick back, get back to your language because otherwise you lose your right to have, you know, part of the translation next time when the this committee will meet. And this is, this is the kind of thing that somehow we, we lose a bit of uh, time and resources just, but this is Europe. It's, this is the diversity and the legacy that we, we, and this is why it's complicated. And yeah, I'm, I agree with you. It's complicated, but it, it's also nice and it's good. Happy to be here. Any more questions? Okay, so if not, thank you very much for your presentation and your answers.